Welcome to the February week three installment of Stacker News. What did you miss last week in YouTube web dev? In this video, I'll highlight my favorite top 20-ish videos of last week to help you decide which to watch, and maybe you'll discover some new videos and channels that you didn't know about. Be sure to watch to the end to check out the underrated video of the week that you need to watch. And if this video helps you out, help me out by liking and subscribing. All of the links to the videos mentioned will be in the description below. This is Stacker News. So just a quick update on the weather conditions here. I live in Texas where we usually just have to deal with hurricanes and it's generally very hot here. So we just don't know what to do when it snows. Everything closes down and this time it was a disaster. The electricity went out all over the state and many have been without water as well. I'm fortunate to have my power and water back, but there are still many without. I'm hoping that these services will get restored very soon to everyone. Hang in there. Now on to the videos. These are in no particular order. It looks like Gary at Design Course stumbled on an emerging UI design trend that he has labeled Aurora Backgrounds. Trends tend to rotate and it looks like it's time for this one to become popular again. Gary will show you some examples and then show you how to create them yourself. Next up, Anastasia answers the question, what is quantum annealer and what can it do? While they rely on the same quantum mechanical concepts, quantum annealers are especially great for optimizing solutions to problems by quickly searching over a space and finding a minimum or solution and also sampling problems. For optimizing solutions, you can think of this as looking over a landscape and finding where the low point is. An annealer does that. Did I sound smart saying all of that? That's good because I was just reading the video description. I understood like five words of that. Anastasia is way smarter than me, so be sure to watch this video and check out her channel if you want to learn more about quantum computing. Now, if you missed my video from last week, I released a Node.js crash course that will teach you the basics of Node.js in just 30 minutes. With Node.js, you can easily create a web server, an API, and many other use cases. So check this video out if you've been curious about backend coding with JavaScript. Next, we have a video from Free Code Camp. You'll learn how to create an Android app with Kotlin that uses core UI components from the Robinhood stock trading app. Instead of tracking stocks, this app will track COVID-19 cases. The app displays key metrics around the growth of coronavirus, including the number of positive cases, negative cases, and deaths per day. So check that out if you want to learn more about building an Android app. Next, we have a video from Tyler Potts. In this video, he'll help you get started with Laravel a PHP web framework for building large-scale web applications. Now, if you want to learn about AWS, Nader Dabit is an expert. In this video, you'll learn how to upload and download images to Amazon S3 from a React application. Next, we have another great video from The Net Ninja. In this tutorial, he'll show you how to get up and running with GitHub Pages to host your project on the web. And Fireship released another 100 seconds video this one will explain what an API is and why they need to rest. Well, you'll learn how an application programming interface API can adhere to representational state transfer rest to enable reliable communication between apps. Really quick, like this video, it helps me out. And of course we had another great video from Brad Traversy. In this one, he uses a headless CMS and builds a GraphQL API using Keystone.js. And if you want to learn about the React hook use state, check out this video from Depeche Malvia. You'll learn how to use component state in functional components using the use state React hook and how to update the state with different values like strings, booleans, numbers, arrays, and objects. Next up, James Q. Quick gives us five tips for crushing your developer interviews. You can have all of the skills in the world, but if you don't interview well, it's hard to get a job. And I'll go ahead and give you one of these tips. Be confident. That's a great tip. Be sure to check out his video for the rest. Designers and developers have a very tricky task of collaborating to bring products to life. In this video, Jesse Showalter will introduce you to Anima, which allows teams to work together in a seamless way. You can design in your tool of choice, add animations and interactions, and then push it to the Anima platform where your development team can get HTML, CSS, React, or the whole code package. Next up, Kevin Powell interviews the great Niall Mayer, and they talk about freelancing as a developer. And in this video, Anya Kubo shows us how to make a typewriter effect using if statements and timing events. Very cool. Now, there are five stages of grief, but what about the five stages of learning to code? 
In this video, Aaron Jack will walk you through these stages as a self-taught software developer. Next up, Dorian Develops gives us a short beginner-friendly introduction to HTML. And next, Brian Jinks gives us an update on what's new in Obsidian. This is another person that is way smarter than me. Half of the stuff that he talks about goes way over my head. So if you want to learn about graph cluster styling and persistent folds, check out this video. And in this video, Kyle at Web Dev Simplified will show you five features in JavaScript that you might not know about, but are incredibly useful. Next up, Kenny Gunderman tells us how he learned React in just seven days. He managed to not just learn it, but also create his first fully functional React app from scratch. It's now time for the underrated video of the week. In this video, Code with Tommy will build and deploy a URL shortener using Django. This is a simple application that will teach you a lot about Python and Django. So be sure to check this out and subscribe to Tommy's channel. I hope this was helpful. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.